you are a testimony of his faithfulness. Amen. When we give the first fruit, we are again saying God is faithful. He has enabled us to produce what we have produced. Now, I just want us to pray for the first fruit that uh, all who have desire and purpose in their heart to give to God as a way of acknowledging God's faithfulness upon their lives. We we'll enjoy the peace. We we'll enjoy the blessing of God that comes with obedience to those who put Him first in their lives. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your people. You are people who have decided to take part of what you have been giving them. Over and above the tithe they have been giving, but this one is an acknowledgement of your faithfulness to them. Father, we pray for special blessing upon each one of them. Bless their families. Bless what stays at home. Bless their businesses. Bless everything they touch because they have decided that they will acknowledge that you are the cause of every good thing they have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, so the first fruit we are receiving up to the end of July. Uh, you prepare, you bring, as I said, grain or cash. Um, uh, it's, it's fine. Today, as we continue with our study of the book of Colossians, we are in Colossians chapter 2, and we are going to read from verses 16 to 30. Three, verses 16 down to verse 33. Uh, we are still talking of the great salvation. The great salvation. And we really need to understand this because failure to understand and appreciate it is working against us, is stifling our faith and even our freedom and our joy in Christ. So if you are able to stand, please rise with me in the reverence of God's word as we read uh, from verse 16 of Colossians chapter 2. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and who worship and the worship of angels disqualify you for the prize. Such a person goes into great detail about what he has seen, and his unspiritual mind puffs him up uh, with idle notions. He has lost connection with the head from whom uh, the whole body is uh, supported and held together by its ligament and sinews grows as God causes it to grow. Since you die with Christ to basic principles of this world, why, as though you still belong to it, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not test, do not touch, these are all destined to perish with use because they are based on human uh, commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed uh, worship, their false humility and their hardship, hard, hard treatment of the body but they lack any value in restraining sensual intentions. He ends the reading of God's word, and to his name be honor, glory, and praise. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. So as we continue to talk about our great salvation, great savior, great salvation, and then we have the great message that Jesus died on the cross, and we are the servants to take this great message 
of the great salvation to the people who need to hear about this. Now, last week we, we, we went into real depth about what this salvation is. This salvation means being in Christ and Christ being in you. Such an intricate relationship between you and Christ that you are not going to be left alone because you are in Christ and Christ is in you. So today that description is continuing but you know sometimes the best way to describe something is to state what it is not. So you want to um, describe to me something that I, I have not seen it before and so you want to tell me that um, a piece of furniture in the house is called a table. So I said, what is a table? Well, the piece of furniture in the house, it is not a stool. It is not a chair. It, so you begin to remove what it is. So that if the person walked into the room, he will begin to see this thing that then he will see something that is different from what he has not seen before. Say, so this must be the table. Because they say it is not, it's not, a, it's not a chair, it's, it's not a stool, but this one must be. So the way to describe something, something is sometimes by stating what it is not. Okay? So if you want to describe um, what um, um, or is you say yes, a liquid. So is it water? No, it's not water. So now Paul is beginning to describe here what salvation is not. So the title of our message this morning is What Salvation Is Not. This is not salvation. It's not salvation. Because he is uh, addressing the problem that have occurred in the church because of false doctrines that have infiltrated the church and have introduced some things that have uh, spoiled, have poisoned the message of the gospel. So that the message of the gospel not now is no longer a pure gospel. It has been poisoned. It's, 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 it's sounding like gospel, but it is not. Number one, salvation is not Christ plus Judaism. That's what Paul is saying here. Salvation is not Christ plus salvation uh, plus Judaism. Verses 16 to 18. He said, Therefore, don't let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to the religious festival, a new moon celebration or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the thing that where to come, the reality, however, is found in Christ. So, is the, uh, that the some Judaizers some people coming from the Jewish background have started teaching the Gentiles who had not been obeying uh, this following the Sabbath, they have not been following New Moon Festival, they have not been following the Jewish dietary rules such as do not eat bacon, do not eat pork, do not, do not eat rabbit. They, 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 they have not been following these things. Now they have believed and they have become Christians. And now these people are turning on these people. They are saying, if you eat pork, you can't be saved. You have believed in Jesus, good. But now stop eating pork. Because if you do that, you are not saved. In other words, salvation is believing in Jesus Christ plus obeying dietary rules of Judaism. Then that is salvation. Paul is saying that is not so. That is not the gospel. That is not the gospel. You are now putting poison in the gospel. All they are saying, if you are believing Jesus Christ, yes, but you cannot be saved if you do not keep the seventh day as a Sabbath. You are lost, doomed. Paul is saying, if you do these things, then you are talking not of the gospel. That's not the gospel. And Paul goes on to say, these things were indeed taught in Judaism. 
They are there. If you read the Bible, you will find them. But when you find them, know that they were put there as a shadow, as a pointer to the real. The real thing is Christ. The Sabbath rest that people were compelled to rest on the Sabbath was pointing to the rest that believers have in Christ Jesus. If you enter Christ, you enter rest. Rest from trying to save yourself by your hard work. You are saved by grace. The laws about diet were pointing to purity. The purity that you have in Christ. You are purified. The holiness that you have in Christ. They are pointing to the purity and holiness in Christ. They were shadows. They were only pictures. The shadow of the picture is good. But when the reality has come, you do not still hold to the picture. If you haven't seen somebody, in those days, I don't know if it's still happening, in those days we used to have poor, poor friends, poor people. All you, all, all you pit balls. We call them pit balls. <laughs> friends. By just writing. You write, they write, you write, they write, you write. Now, he sends you a picture. Ah, this is how it looks. Oh, good. Now, if that friend comes in person, do you still keep it? Yeah, it's not or you leave a picture here and look at the person. <laughs> that picture was pointing to this man who has now come. And the man has come. And you're not going to talk to him. You're just talking to the picture. You're just following the picture. Paul is saying, this picture is not the real thing. The dietary rules were appointed to the purity, to the holiness that Christ will bring in the life of those who believe. The Sabbath race, the Munyumun Fuan Festival, they are all pointed to the race that Christ will bring in the life and the hearts of those who believe. Now the reality has come. Move on to the reality. That is salvation. Salvation is Christ alone, not Christ plus Judaism. Number two, Christ, salvation is not Jesus plus human philosophy. Human philosophy, anyway, this makes sense to human, to human the way of thinking. Verse 18, verse 18, he said, uh, do not let anyone who delights in false humility and worship of angels disqualify you for a pride. Such a person goes into great details about what he has seen, and his unspiritual mind puffs him up with idle notions. Now, the human mind is saying, God is so high, He's so big, He created everything. Now, you, how can you talk to God directly? Can you pick up a phone and call the king or the president? Can you do that? No. So how do you think that you can talk to God that way? You can't. You shouldn't think that God can talk to you. But God has angels. So you must talk to God through angels. They call that they, they thought that that was humility. That is poison in the gospel. That is not salvation. Because God has made it very clear, verse 19. If you contact, connect to God through an angel or through something else, says you, he has lost connection with the head, which is Christ, 
from whom the whole body is supported and held together by his ligament and sinews grows as God causes it to grow. If you try to connect to God through an angel, you are losing connection with the head, who is Jesus Christ. And therefore, you are losing your salvation. Means you are not connected to God. When Christ died on the cross, the day, he, the moment he breathed his last, the curtain in the temple that was separating the Holy of Holies from the holy place got torn from top to bottom signifying that the way to God has been fully opened. There is therefore now no condemnation. You can come to God directly. The writer of Hebrews says this in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This heresy that was trying to get people not to talk to God, but to talk to God through angels was based on human philosophy or human way of thinking because we cannot talk directly to our president. We go through the district of governor who takes us to the regional governor who will take us through the security means to get to talk to the president. We take that philosophy, we bring it in the church. Say, so now you, you, just an ordinary member, you think you can talk to them? You go through your pastor, your pastor goes through an angel, an angel goes through an archangel, and then you get to God. <laughs> this is human way of thinking. We only go through Christ, who is also part of the Godhead. So when I say, in Christ's name, the door into the throne room gets open. Amen. And I get there to talk to God. If you reject that, you try to go through angels, you have rejected what Christ accomplished on the cross when he died for you. Therefore, you have rejected salvation. This is serious, brothers and sisters. In fact, in verse 19, now, Vasilisas, I want to talk about the danger of this false teaching. Verse 19 says, The person who does that, he has lost connection with the head. He has lost connection with grace. He has lost connection with the only one who will save you. You have put something in between you and the Savior, you've lost. It's either you have Christ and Christ alone as your Savior, or you don't have Him. You cannot say, I have Christ, but then my obedience to the law is also going to help me. Uh -uh. I have to emphasize this greatly because what I hear most of the time preached and sung in the songs in this country is not talking about the grace. Have you heard songs where it says, if you stop drinking, you will go to heaven? If you stop smoking, 
you will go to heaven. If you stop polygamy, you will go to heaven. I have used to tell you that you can stop all these things and still not go to heaven because you go to heaven only through Christ. By refusing to approach God directly through Christ, you have denied the faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross. You are saying it is not important, it cannot save you. That's why you are adding something to it. If you are in Christ, so these things do not matter, my friend. If you are inside the house, do you need an umbrella? What would you think of someone sitting inside the house taking some umbrella? Are you not denying the fact that you are inside the house? Say that these things have an appearance of wisdom. There's 20. 23 says, Such regressions indeed have an appearance of wisdom with, with their self um, imposed worship and their false humility and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack the value of restraining sensual indulgence. You are still having lust. You are still having jealousy. You are still having hatred. You are still uh, having anger. In fact, these things, if you do them, you feel proud over those people who are not doing it. And that's why they were judging them. They were condemning them says you have just believed in Christ and then you are working on the Sabbath, you can't be saved. Because they think that they will be saved by their They thought that they are saved by strict observation of them. Let me put it this way. It is God's faithfulness that will save us. In his word he has declared, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you are born again, you are a new creation, you are old is gone away. You have become a new creation. And I said last time that if you believe
He said to a crippled man, stand up, and he stood up, that was faith. So today he's saying to us, believe that you have been forgiven. So I wake up and I walk like I have been forgiven. That is faith. But when you believe, good behavior follows. Change is the result. A new nature is formed in you. That new nature does not last after wickedness. That is faith. I want to close with this. This whole thing we're talking about here, it all hangs upon the Word of God and upon God's faithfulness. The Word of God has only meaning because God is faithful. What He has said, He will do it. Even if we all decided here in this world, Salvation is not by grace, it is by work, and we start working, digging, cutting ourselves and doing one over thing. That is not going to change anything. Because I want you to be moved by how many people are believing that salvation is Jesus plus good works. That does not change what God has said. So when the reformers were bringing back the word of God into the Bible, one of the things that they say is this, that the word of God, which is the Bible, is the only source of information, reliable information about my salvation, not human reasoning. God tell me. The word of God tells me that if a sinner who has been sinning all his life decides to call on Jesus and ask for forgiveness, that sinner will be forgiven. And when Christ comes into that sinner's heart, that heart is going to be changed. That sinner is going to become a new person from within and that sinner's priorities, preferences, appetites are going to change because of the Holy One that is inside of that person. That's the Word of God! And then people say, ah, no, it's not as simple as that. It's not as that, this, that, 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 that. No. The Word of God and the word of God alone. What the word of God says, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. If you call on Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. If you invite him into your heart, he will come and change and dwell in your heart forever. And then you will be inside him. So when people say, how do you know that you are inside God? I said, I know it because he said so. The integrity of God's word. The word of God alone. They also told about Christ alone. That Christ alone, Christ alone is our Savior. Nothing else. Not good work, not good efforts, not good this, not church business, not that. Christ. But when I am saved, I begin to do what he tells me to do. What I do does not save me, but what I do is, a, is, a, is an implication that I am saved. I've always said here, if you see, if you see some people here, sometimes when you walk around you see some people working, all of you when they were working here, they, you see people are working. Those people are working there because they have been employed there. And they will be paid at the end of the day for their work because they have been employed first. Some of them might actually be sitting down the whole day and see at the end of the day they will be paid because they have been employed. 
Now you go and get one of their slashes and start working there the whole day. But your, your name is not at the city council. At the end of the day, when they call to pay, your name will not be there, you will not be paid. You are not employed. You are not employed. The others will be paid, not because they were cutting grass, but because they were employed. I am a child of God. So when I do some good works, it's because I am a child of God. But even if I did nothing, I'm still a child of God. Christ alone. And we get connected to Christ. Faith alone. Faith. 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 How do you know that you have faith? Because when you hear the word of God, you tremble. You want to do it. You want to obey it. That's faith. When you read the word of God, you want to do it. You want to follow it. That means you have faith. Faith is putting the word of God in action. So it's not feeling. It's not feeling. You, you could be sitting here and crying with tears down here, tears, 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 with all your emotions. But if you do not do what the word of God says, sorry, you are just feeling self-pity. You know, self-pity is different from faith. Faith. God says, I'm forgiven, therefore I am. Then the other thing that they, they, they said was, uh, the, the former, they said grace alone. Grace is the reason why Christ decided to leave heaven and to come and to die for us. It is only grace. We did not deserve it. We are never going to deserve it. We did not earn it. We were not good enough. But he died for us. On the other hand, you, of all the people, decided to be, you believed. That's also grace. Others, you know, up to now, they are struggling. They are not able to believe. But it has been granted to you by grace to believe. And so you are a believer. They start up to worship you. that you are saved to stay in the presence of God. And I declare to you today that if you have believed in Jesus Christ, your name is in heaven and you are placed before God has been booked. One of these days you are going to see God face to face and he's going to say, I do not condemn you because of what Christ has done. Now you can just bless him and worship and say thank you. Because there are some people out there who are much better people. They love their wives, they love their children, but they do not have Christ. They will not enter heaven. But you will by the grace of God. Because you have believed How can you not worship? How can you not say thank you? How can you not bless his name? He has chosen you to be with him eternally. That is his decision. And all his blessings will fall. You worship him, blessings will fall. You worship him, his goodness will fall all the days of your life. Because of God's faithfulness, you have not been destroyed. Because of God's faithfulness, this country has not been destroyed. You want to give God the glory. You want to give God the praise. Not because we are good people, but because of God's grace. 
What's happening in this country would have caused wars. There would have been gun shooting everywhere. But God has mercy upon this country. We want to bless Him. Yes. We want to worship Him. And to acknowledge that God, you have done it. Receive the glory. Receive the praise. 